What's up guys? Today doing a calibration on this B and K 747B. So the first thing you're gonna do is come down here, turn power switch on. That's gonna turn red, and then we're gonna come over here to this screw and counterclockwise drops the needle this way. Uh, clockwise brings it that way. You want it centered right with zero. Alright, so now we're gonna look at socket one. So pin one is over here, pin seven, seven is here. So we're gonna flip this upside down. Now we got it flipped upside down. You can see here is pin one, two, and you can count the rest. So this is pin seven. You can see that goes to ground. We're gonna take our ground and we're gonna attach it to pin seven, just like so. All right, so what we did, we put the capacitor in pin one. I have it just uh, with a toothpick and then an alligator clip that comes down and around to the voltmeter and then our black one is coming from the back pin 7 and then we're going to come over to our uh, multimeter make sure you have it on AC so if you don't have an auto range one make sure you set it for low AC right now we have the unit off. We're going to be turning that on. The transformer is here and you can see that's R21 over there. Turning it counterclockwise reduces the voltage and clockwise um, increases it. So we're looking to get 1.5 volts on the meter. Alright, so while we're adjusting it, we're doing counterclockwise. Now you can see I just went a little too far so and it's very sensitive. So right there is good, and again, that's holding the test button down. That's the first part of the calibration. All right, so now that we got our signal level set, we're going to move on to the bias voltage. So we're still using the ground on pin 7, and this time we're not using a capacitor, and we're going to pin 1. Over here on the meter, we're switching to DC voltage, so set your probes accordingly. And then uh, what we're going to do is turn the unit back on and we're going to press test 1. And over here, this is going to be R17. We're going to adjust that until we get 2.5 volts on our meter. Alright, so I have test 1 pressed down and we're getting a little fluctuation there as I move this. So just to show you, if I turn this all the way, uh, I'm going to go counterclockwise. You could see you're at 3.5, and then if we go all the way clockwise, we can bring it down to 1.8, 1.9. So again, we're looking for 2.5 volts DC. And I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. Now you do know that's uh, negative 2.5, so that's normal. I was saying 2.5 volts. Negative is normal on that. All right, so the next step we're going to do is meter bridge balance. Now the sensitivity has to be set to 100, and on this tube tester, somebody there's a set screw in the back here, okay? Uh, you gotta unloosen it if yours is off because this is you know critical so the line needs to line up right with a hundred mine was at like 98 so I unloosen that screw and then I set it to 100 tighten that screw up the other thing you're gonna need is a 10k uh, ohm resistor 5 watt you're gonna put it between pin 2 and five so all I did is bend it and then I stuck it in there and you know make sure you deoxid use some deoxid uh, D5 alright so there's the potentiometer it's R4 that's what we're gonna be adjusting so sensitivity at a hundred you'll turn it on and you want the meter to read right there at zero when you're pressing one the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have the whole tube tester laying flat. Alright, so we're going to press the test button now. 
and we are right at zero. All right, so now we're going to set up the calibration for the short sensitivity. So we're using a one meg uh, resistor. This happens to be a one watt. We're putting it in pin two and five again, and we're going to flip the tube tester over. All right, so the potentiometer that you're you're going to be looking at now. We're this is the top. And there's your uh, bulbs, your big capacitor, and it's this one right here. This is R20. And it may look like it doesn't have a screwdriver slot, but there is one. That's the one I'm going to be turning to make the short light just about glow. All right, so we're going to turn the unit back on. We're going to be pressing the shorts button, as you can see right to the left there. And we're going to be watching this. So you see I have the shorts button in. That's not glowing, so we got to adjust where I just showed you in the back. Now we're going to rotate it and I'm going counterclockwise and there boom it just came on. Now when we leave the shorts button out it goes out. That's set. Alright so for the final calibration it's going to be grid emissions. So I have a 100 mega ohm resistor and that goes in pin 1 and 7 got some toothpicks holding it in. Now if you don't have a 100 uh, mega ohm resistor you can wire uh, 10 10 mega ohm resistors together or 520 mega ohm resistors together in series. So uh, that simply means you would take one leg, tie it to the other, to the other and you're gonna have a fairly large um, resistor bundle. So anyway this is a hundred and then what we're going to do is we'll turn the power on and we'll hold the grid emissions down. The potentiometer that you're turning is this one here. So uh, that is R10 over here closest to the switch. That's the one you want to turn. Okay so now the machine is on and I have that potentiometer all the way backed off counterclockwise. That 100 meg ohm resistor is in between 1 and 7 as we discussed. As it reads it says adjust emission sensitivity potentiometer R10 which I showed you. So the meter reads at the upper edge of the green segment. So I'm going to say the upper green is going to be right here at this edge. And then when you pull it it should fall back down to zero. So right now we have it counterclockwise all the way down. We're going to press the grid emissions button and we're going to set the needle that it's just at the upper edge of the green. So grid emissions button is down, rotating the potentiometer, oh, there we go. And I'm going to say that's about where they want it. Alright so if I hold the grid emissions and then I take these toothpicks out and I pull that resistor it falls to zero. Alright so we got a 12 AX7 preamp tube in here so there's two parts to this tube. Now what you do is uh, before you put the tube in you keep that off you set your heater this uh, will be the filament on this tube will be 12 and then your uh, shunt English or sensitivity depending on your meter it's going to be 89 and then you're going to set 1 to 5 according you know to your tube chart so this happens to be F E C A B and then over here on 13 and 14 we set that to A and A and uh, you could see in there it's been on a bit so now it got warm First thing we're going to do is press the shorts button. Uh, we're going to see if it shorts and it doesn't. So now we can go to the grid emissions test and you're going to push that. Nothing. And then we go to test and that's testing good. So if you wanted to you can hold test one and then push this life over and when you push the life over, that meter should not drop. Alright, so that part of the tube is good. Now we'll take and we'll reset these levers, except for 4 and 5. 
which is going to be A and B, and then 6 is going to get set to F, and then 7 is going to get set to E, and then 8 is going to get set to C. 13 and 14 stay the same, and we repeat the same thing because that has two parts in that tube. So shorts, no shorts. Now I do know there's a short in that tube because this did light up and I was having static in uh, my amp. So it's what you could do is hold the shorts button in and then uh, kind of tap on the tube and see if anything happens. Nothing's happening. But it did light up and it showed it when I got the tester and when I rebuilt it. So I'm not trusting that tube. It's probably bad. You don't go any further if that short light comes on.